Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 4.52% to 37,682. Ethereum down 7.33% to 2623. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explained the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Thank you for being part of our extended global family. I appreciate you being here. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, please know our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. There's always hope and the sun will come out again. When we look at the situation in Ukraine, unfortunately things are degenerating there. And we have a lot of news on this today. The French Foreign Ministry calls on its nationals to leave Russia immediately. There are a lot of countries saying, get out of Russia. And we're seeing actually volunteers going into Ukraine as well as Sweden delivering more armaments. What we can see is that various countries are basically saying, get out of Russia. Things are hotting up in there. Going into the Ukraine, we can see these red areas. They're Russian controlled territories and they're growing day by day. Vladimir Putin didn't really care too much about the international response for his invading of Ukraine, but things are changing. The world is severely punishing Russia's financial system. President Biden announced sanctions on Russian banks that hold around $1 trillion of assets. President Biden has said this means that every asset Russians have in America will be frozen. They're of course talking about very specific Russians. And we can see news that the EU has sanctioned Belarus for its part in the invasion. And the Russian media is not taking it lying down. They say the West does not hide that it wants to destroy Russia. How interesting. We can also see airlines cancelling their flights into and out of Russia and many countries saying get out of Russia, including the US, France, the Czech Republic and others. Things are actually escalating. The EU head of foreign affairs says that we can't block the reserves of Russian central banks in Moscow or in China. And when we look at how much China has of Russian reserves, we can see it's quite a lot, followed by France, Japan, Germany, the US and others and the UK. I'm seeing a lot of reports in the media of trillions or billions of dollars. So I do what I do and I go behind the numbers and do independent research. One particular account on Twitter said the West has frozen 39% or 630 billion of Russian central bank reserves. Let's have a look at this. What actually is going on? As of December 2021, foreign exchange reserves in Russia were $630 billion. I'm not quite sure if people are confusing the percentage with the total amount. And we can see the 14th of January the actual amount of foreign exchange reserves in Russia was 631 billion in total. And it's really important to read the language. President Biden said they've sanctioned Russian banks that hold one trillion in assets. Not that they've actually sanctioned one trillion in assets. There's a really big difference. It's also interesting to note that the interest rate in Russia is currently 9.5%. When we look at the central bank balance sheet, that's about 54.29 trillion ruble. So how much is a Russian ruble? How much is all of that amount in USD? It's 649.9 billion. So it comes around the $630 billion mark. With this in mind, I don't think that this is actually correct. 
I don't think that the West has frozen $630 billion. And you'll see a little bit later that there's a few caveats, a few or terms and conditions on this freezing. The other thing to bear in mind, the gold in the bank, <laughs> gold in the bank of Russian vaults, that can't be sanctioned. That's gold in the bank. And we have a lot. For example, from 2020 to 2021, we actually had an increase in that amount in Russia. Also, the foreign currency reserves held by China for Russia also increased. We saw the foreign currency reserves go down a little bit in this year for Japan, for Germany, go down quite a bit in France and the US. So just keep this in mind. We're hearing a lot about bank runs in Russia, and that makes a lot of sense. Basically, with air traffic getting cut off above Russian airspace, you've got to wonder about what is actually going on. And we've got a lot of different bank exposure. France has the highest bank exposure at the moment, along with Italy. Austria is increasing. The US just had a bit of a tick up. To understand what sanctions are going on, it's really good to look at Order 14024. I'm going to leave this link in the description of this video, but coming from a legal background, I just want to tell you a couple of things. What they're basically doing is this is a sanction order or prohibition. What we see is that the US Department of State has determined that the following activities by US persons or within the US are prohibited. Note there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Other dealings in new debt of longer than 14 days maturity. From a legal perspective, when you look at from or longer than 14 days maturity, it doesn't actually stop the dealings in new debt of under 14 days maturity. There's another thing to bear in mind. This is on or after the 26th of March 2022. This particular order also actually outlines the annex of who's covered, but I'm going to go into this in a little bit more depth. I'll also leave this link in the description of the video. This is from the US Department of the Treasury talking about this. One thing to bear in mind, there's a lot of things that I could discuss here, but I just want to give you some sort of concept on what is actually happening. This is going to be effective within 30 days. That is really important. So the date is March the 26th, 2022. Before that date, Russians can move. That is the sanction Russian targets can move their money around the world. And who are those targets? So we can see in this list, I won't worry too much about reading them out, but you can see they are the major organizations inside Russia in a centrally planned economy like Russia and China. What happens is the vast majority of organizations are either state owned or majority state owned. There's been a lot of discussion about the banks and the oil and gas companies, but I wanted to point out something here. The world's largest dining, diamond mining company is being sanctioned. Just be aware of that. If you want to go off and buy a diamond ring, now may be the time. To avoid unintended consequences on third parties, there's eight general licenses authorizing certain transactions. So it's not an absolute blanket ban. There's also a lot of sanctions on Russian elites. And this is very much because Russia being centrally controlled, the power resides in a handful of people. What I find really interesting is the subsidiaries of Russian financial institutions. Many of these subsidiaries are inside Russia, but there are other subsidiaries outside, such as Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Belarus, Austria, Luxembourg, Cyprus, quite a few in Cyprus. Property and interest in property, Kazakhstan, Amidia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Angola, Vietnam, Germany. Just keep your mind on this Cyprus, Cyprus. It's really coming up a lot. Cyprus outside of Russia. 
So if you're in Cyprus, please make sure that you're not affected by this. We've been talking a lot about Sun Tzu and the art of war, and this military doctrine of 13 chapters was written two and a half thousand years ago. When it comes to waging war, have enough resources. The world, the globe, right across the world is saying to Russia, you want to keep on going with this. We're going to cripple your financial system. That's actually really good because if they can actually do so, Russia will back down. If it doesn't, it was never going to back down in the first place. And at least they know earlier rather than later. A part of waging war is to go for swift victories. Russia has not had a swift victory, and that's fantastic. When it comes to strategic attacks, win without fighting, that's a big failure for Russia. No remote intervention. The whole world is pulling together as one to do what has been unthinkable in the past, such as the disconnection from the SWIFT system. And the SWIFT system is just a bank messaging system. It doesn't actually transport money around. It's just a very well-trusted intermediary that facilitates global financial transactions. Europe has seen two world wars and they don't want to see a third one. What is actually happening right now is the countries around the European bloc are basically saying, Russia, don't go any further with this. And they're putting down their feet. It's really, really good to see. When we zoom in to the center of Ukraine, the capital, we can see the Russians are advancing. They want to capture the capital. We cover these outside trends as crypto technical analysts because we have to scientifically track investor attention through reality, which is price, and not our own concerns as to what may happen. That's why we look through the lens of knowledge. If we just light switch in and out of opportunities because we hear something negative in the news, we'll actually lose a lot of money. We need to scale in and scale out. Buying on the red is always the best idea. Buying on the green can turn into a very expensive hobby and activity. Professionals only buy on the red, but they also time it. Rule 570, psychology sets profitability. The crypto market is like being a firefighter. There's always fire breaking out and that's a natural state, but we have our protective equipment. We know how to combat the fire. We have the knowledge. The very big difference between losing money, making money and keeping money comes out in our training. In zone one and zone two, people are addicted to certainty. They must have an answer for an uncertain and probabilistic market. When we get to zone three, which is the patience and rule zone, this is where we make money. We buy on the red, sell on the green, but that doesn't mean you buy on the red one day and sell on the green the next. There is a tactic, an art of war, a whole science behind this. There is of course a huge difference between making money to become rich and making money to become wealthy. Wealthy is very quiet. Rich is very showy. When people are very showy with their wealth, with their riches, they just do not keep the money. Keeping the money and creating intergenerational wealth is the focus of our community. And of course, having a really beautiful life in the process. That's why we focus on real wealth and maintaining a positive excellence life trend, one of integrity, decency and kindness creating inner and outer peace. But when you don't have outer peace, when you don't have inner peace, it's time to apply knowledge, strength, boundaries, courage, and honor to whatever problem that is. And we can see the world has come together to protect Ukraine. It's just beautiful to see. As we're looking externally, we need to understand rule 225. Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. And that's because the crypto market is really tiny. It's growing exponentially. It's just starting its adoption cycle, but it is very, very tiny. And because it's tiny, it is buffeted around by the stock market and the bond market. 
we'll just get a quick perspective on what's happening here. And Masterclass students, you'll access my live charts, this chart in TM6. What we can see is fear came down in the last trading session as prices rallied up to a line of resistance. Just be aware we're approaching a line of resistance inside the market. We look at oil prices, they've been rejected from a resistance level. They weren't able to turn that to support, but they're coming down to a support level. Also bear that in mind. And when we look at bond prices, bond prices are just hovering around. That particular resistance slash support line is just a bit equal weight as to where that will go. When we look at bond yields, we're above support at the moment. And when we look at gold, gold has been selling down. Gold is in a long-term uptrend, and that's something that we always have to be aware of. Gold is geopolitically risk-driven. When there are risks inside the economy, gold tends to take off. And we can see the US dollar, the DXY, shot up as a safe haven store, but then shot down. I believe that the world is looking around and saying these sanctions are pretty good, but we'll have to wait a couple of days to see how the markets really digest them. I'd like to explain just a little bit more about the 10-5-10 rule. The concept, if you bought at a specific price and price went down around 50%, when it comes back up, it comes up 100%. But if we get even lower amounts, for example, what would happen if we went down, for example, 62%, what would we come up? We'd come up 167%. All professional traders and investors understand this relationship between down percentages and up percentages. When things sell off, when things go down, that's absolutely an ideal time to get involved. So when we look at the NASDAQ 100, how low could we probabilistically go? A lot of people have been asking me this question. So I did some analysis last night on it. I would expect, and what we do is that we talk about 10-5-10 levels. 10-5-10 is a climactic sell-off. It's not just a normal movement. The concept is the NASDAQ 100 is under resistance at the moment. It is in a downtrend. If it continues in a downtrend, what are some key levels? One is 12,957, another one, 12,510, another, 11,925. But there's a major area, a confluence of very, very strong support at the 10,814. Keeping this in mind, even if we got a climactic sell off that went to 10,814, this is actually a support level that exists inside the market and the bullish structure of the NASDAQ would continue to remain intact. Please bear this in mind. We know that Bitcoin can't escape the US stock market's gravity. So we need to understand what could be happening inside the US market. We can see, for example, when it comes to inflation expectations, inflation has been increasing. We've seen a lot of positive correlation between Bitcoin's price, that's the yellow line, and the inflation lines, the 10-year and 5-year break-even inflation rate. Both have taken off recently. This should be borne in mind because if inflation takes off, Bitcoin is a really, really good investment. The Fed is seeking to reduce its balance sheet, but the Fed's balance sheet continues to increase. We've had a decrease in the M1 money stock and M2 money stock, but the CPI is also increasing. These are just factors we bear in mind. A lot of people can say a lot of things, but when you look at the data, you see the facts. It's also good to keep our eye on the transportation indexes. What happens generally if transport indexes diverge from the major indexes, the economy could be in trouble. What we're seeing is that everything is following everything at the moment. And we can see, for example, that the airline industry, this is this white line, this white thick line, just got over a level of resistance. It's come down recently, I believe, because of the trouble in Russia and Ukraine. 
We also know Rule 217. Crypto technical analysts are all about the science of understanding investor attraction of funds. And when we do that, we know where Bitcoin is going. Rule 217, no stock market can escape the US's gravity. That's because the US market accounts for the majority of investment of all stock markets globally. These are the six largest Russian firms inside Russia's economy. And we can see the Russian index in white. Russia's index was tanking down. But you also notice the NASDAQ. Nothing can escape NASDAQ's gravity. So what happened when NASDAQ came up, the Russian market came up, NASDAQ here is we're just using it as a proxy for the US market. It's not as if the Russian market rallied. It actually followed the US market. And masterclass students, you'll get this live chart in LV8. Now we have an approximate idea of how the world is playing out. We need to actually look at Bitcoin's gravity. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. What does this actually mean? If you hold a number of alts, those alts will move in directional alignment with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin sells off severely, your alts will sell off severely. There's a 99% probability of it. Sometimes you get a 1% lucky winner, but please bear in mind, 99% is a very high level number. This probably gives you a really good view. You can see Bitcoin selling off and the alt selling off. You can see some alts are actually green. Does this mean they're fighting against Bitcoin's gravity? Not really. What happens is Bitcoin has a directional correlation. As Bitcoin moves up, the alts will move up more. If Bitcoin comes down, sometimes the alts move down less, but they're always following in one form or another. It just you get an over exaggeration to the upside or to the downside, depending on what's happening in the broader crypto market. And we know the broader crypto market is impacted by the broader global market. Looking to the crypto fear and greed index, we can see the market is very close to extreme fear. We track Bitcoin futures open interest because there's such a degree of correlation between increasing open interest and increasing Bitcoin price. When we look at recent price action, the amount of open interest inside the crypto market has been coming down. And you can see when open interest just drops through the floor, we have a big correction in the price of Bitcoin. Just always keep that in mind. That's really important. We do still have an upward progression we're not violating that lower level of upward support inside futures open interest. But if we do, we're going to see a potential big move down. Things are really uncertain at the moment. We could see a big move down or a big move up because we're getting across tight resistance. These times are really important to keep your eye on Bitcoin. In zone three and zone four, we use volatility as our friend. And we can see that 24 hour liquidations were 235 million across nearly 61,000 positions. Across the past 24 hours, about 71% of liquidations were long liquidations. So when we look at that, more longs are getting liquidated than shorts. But always bear in mind, longs and shorts always get liquidated. If you use leverage trading, you'll find that you could get liquidated on both sides of a hedge. Hedging just means that you try to take advantage of up or down moves and box in your risk. It doesn't work in crypto. You can get wiped out in both directions. As a community, we know that we do not need to le use leverage. And that's basically because crypto is highly leveraged already. The fact is that the stock market and the Forex market, they actually require leverage because the percentage increases are so minute. In Forex, you talk about pips, which are tiny increments, and you need to have leverage to see any kind of return. In crypto, everything can move around plus and minus 30% easily 
on average so we don't use leverage because leverage will wreck your account when i go through derivatives futures and options i'm just showing you where other people are betting and that can give us a bit of an edge but please avoid from doing it unless you're a professional and even when you're professional you don't need to do it crypto is already geared and leveraged already at spot when we look at options expiring the end of March, we can see that a lot of people are expecting 50,000 Bitcoin. And there are also bets, and this literally is a bet, up to $400,000. We can see that the majority of participants are expecting higher prices. Bitcoin is currently trading at 37,596. What has happened here to Bitcoin's price action? What we've seen is this particular resistance level, 39,832, has been very strong. Bitcoin simply can't get above it. It's tried and tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. It's tried to recharge and push through. It's had no luck. And what are the shorts doing? The shorts are saying, oh, yeah, I'm not buying it. I think it's going to go up. What we are actually seeing, the shorts are coming out of the market. We need the shorts in the market to get exponentially higher prices. For example, when we moved from around 34,322 up to 39, nearly 40,000, that was a liquidation of shorts. That's what happens when shorts are liquidated. But it goes the opposite direction as well. When longs get liquidated, the shorts have a field day and prices will plummet. The question is, what are we looking at? We can see that we're under multiple resistance levels. What happens is just like a life pullback. Sometimes crypto needs to accumulate strength to push through. And when it pushes through, we can see this kind of behavior and it can shoot up because a lot of shorts have entered the market. We're not seeing that right now, but when shorts do enter the market, they fuel a rocket up. Just bear that one in mind. It's really important to see. We can see some long tail rejections to the upside, meaning a lot of sellers are pushing the price down. We have the next support level of 36,619 and quite a major support at 34,219. Because we haven't been able to breach this level of resistance, we're starting to accumulate more levels of resistance. This means the price may need to go down a little bit further and it may come down to that 36 or the 34 to regain some power to forge through this. And we really need the shorts to re-enter the market. We can look at these lines like fences. That's why we have Bitcoin Percy here. Good old Bitcoin Percy. He's all about staying inside a fence. When a fence is drawn up, getting across that fence is quite difficult. And Percy just wants to either hang out with FOMO, fear of missing out, or FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Please let me know in the comments who you think Percy's going to visit. Either FUD at around 34219 or FOMO at 41384. As crypto is so incredibly volatile, we must make in advance probabilistic choices. Please know what you will do if the price of your crypto plummets, skyrockets, or just gets boring and goes horizontal. If you have an answer to those three questions, you'll sleep really, really well at night. Looking at the top eight cryptos, what we need to understand is how Bitcoin's gravity plays out on these cryptos. When looking at Ethereum, we can see Bitcoin's gravity, this blue line. You can see Bitcoin's gravity is absolutely controlling Ethereum. Bitcoin sells down, Ethereum sells down, but it sells down even more. This is how Bitcoin's gravity operates on alts. If you do not know what's happening with Bitcoin, and it can take a while and take a little bit of learning to come up to speed, you will not be able to predict where your particular beloved alts are going. Have a look at Binance Coin. When Bitcoin came down like this, what did Binance Coin do? It came down exactly the same, but more severely. And this is why a lot of people like Bitcoin, because it's more stable as a crypto. Personally, the alts are fantastic. Bitcoin is kind of like watching grass grow. 
in terms of how well the alts move around with their volatility. Volatility is just an incredible thing to take advantage of, but you have to make it your friend, not your enemy. You have to get enjoyment out of falling prices, and that requires you to rewire how you look at the crypto market. Look at XRP. When Bitcoin came down, what did XRP do? It came down. When Bitcoin rallied up, what did XRP do? It rallied up. Bitcoin came down. XRP rallied down, rallied down, came down. When Bitcoin rallied up, XRP rallied up. You'll see this time and time and time again. Sometimes you see an under and an over divergence. What actually gravity means is it is literally a pull you see how there was a suppression in price here with luna bitcoin's gravity always played out what came next an absolute rocket this is how gravity works and it's really good to understand many in the community have done really really well in luna and just to let the masterclass students know i closed out my positions in luna i'll be putting a video up on that and it was a fairly good increase in price what we actually always see is when the percentage of price varies dramatically from bitcoin for example when it's under gravity that will create an over gravity situation it just takes time. And when we look at something like this, around here, a lot of people would have said, okay, it was kind of following Bitcoin's action and it was getting weak and, and then it went in a completely different direction. It's actually not correct. Let's just zoom in here. Let's just show how much it actually does follow. Notice this, Bitcoin coming down, Luna came down, Luna going up, Bitcoin going up. Bitcoin coming down, Luna coming down. Look at this. It's absolutely following the directional movement, but it became over-exaggerated. Why? Because gravity is almost like a slingshot. It's like an elastic band, like a rubber band. If it's under, it's going to shoot over. It's over, it's going to shoot under. This alone can be a license to print money if you understand it. I've just drawn out a couple of trading levels that you may be interested in, that may help you. And of course, you have to do your own analysis. But this is just analysis that I've done, which puts in probable levels that could be hit. Of course, the lower you go, the more time it takes for things to be hit. And that's absolutely okay. Because when you look at something like this, this particular price movement, you may say, oh, Ken, that's not much. Actually, it was pretty nasty. In a little over half a day, Luna actually came down nearly 23%. That's 23% down in 14 hours. But then what happened next? Then in about two and a half days, I'll just zoom in here a little bit so it's easier for you to see. And then in two and a half days, approximately, it came up 58%. This is important to understand. This is normal for crypto. And well done for all the community members that did really, really well on Luna. That's just fantastic. One thing to also bear in mind, a lot of people were selling Luna up around this $60 mark and upwards. It's not a problem if the price continues to go up. You just set the reasonable percentage that you are happy with and you just lock that in. If it goes up higher, you just say, so what? I'll get in on it later. And that is how you combat that greed based element. If you don't combat greed, you will hold on and you can very likely get up to a position where you see it selling off and you say, oh no, I got it wrong. I'm going to get out. I have to stop this pain. I have to stop the fear. And then you get out of it only for it to rally. That's why you must always say to yourself, I don't care. If you're an investor, Getting the mindset to buy red is very, very important. All professional investors do that. And having the trading mindset as well as the investing mindset is literally an unbeatable proposition. It's really powerful to keep rule four in mind. Price moves in waves. It's always going up and down and up and down. 
There is a scientific process for surviving and then prospering in the crypto market. Crypto is the most volatile market on the planet. You need a lot of science behind you and you need a process. You need knowledge, you need skills. That's what crypto technical analysts do. If you would like to learn how to become a crypto technical analyst, please go across to cryptotechnicalanalysis.org. That's www.cryptotechnicalanalysis.org. I will leave the link to this in the description of the video. If you go and find a CTKS ambassador, they can give you 80% off. The masterclass price, which is a premium Rolls Royce level masterclass on crypto technical analysis. It's also because of my background as a former lecturer in first and second year statistics. When I taught all of stats from the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and with a great amount of humor too, you'll find that learning is quite easy in this process, but it does require dedication. You'll go through the foundation section through the trend section, which will be revealed in a number of days time. And then the timing section, finding the opportunities, real wealth, getting your absolute attitude aligned and fearless. And then trigger section, which is how to actually buy and sell. And then the living masterclass section after that. I think it's also really important to go across to the testimonial section and understand why the masterclass was created. It's all about passing on three decades plus of experience in the financial markets and updating crypto technical analysis to a level that can be applied in crypto. And I know that sounds funny, but before this particular masterclass was created, people were using tools from the stock market and Forex and getting wrecked and not knowing why. You'll also see various feedback and testimonials from different people that could be interesting to look at as well. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. In the comments section, please let me know where you think crypto will be headed to next and which particular cryptos you're eyeing for a fast recovery when things turn around. We are absolutely still in the bull market. So picking out the right opportunities can make a huge amount of difference. Thank you very much for our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers and to the CTKS ambassadors for mentoring masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching. And being part of our global KS family, Please say hi and let me know if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I have left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the link to the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please seek out an ambassador to get 80% off. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.